Hello everybody, we will continue our interesting work on our channel Radiology Interesting Update. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Our lecture today is Ultrasound Signs. Part 2. Let us start. Kidney Sweat Sign. It refers to the presence of thin, hypoechoic, extracapsular fluid collections around kidneys in renal failure patients. This fluid is considered pre-renal edema. It can be seen on ultrasound, CT and MRI. Bright band sign. Infarct areas are hypoechoic compared to the rest of the spleen, but sometimes acute infarctions can be isoechoic and hard to identify. The bright band sign can be seen within infarct lesions. Caput medusae sign. It is a clinical and radiological finding, which can be detected in patients with severe portal hypertension. It describes engorged parambilical veins radiating from the umbilicus within the adipose tissue of the anterior abdominal wall, creating portosystemic anastomoses. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis signs. Target slash donut sign. Antral nipple sign. String sign. Cervix sign. Target slash donut sign. Hyperterophied, hypoechoic muscle surrounding echogenic mucosa. Antral nipple sign. Redundant pyloric mucosa projecting into gastric antrum. String sign. String sign, elongated pylorus with a narrow lumen with only small barium streaks passing through. Cervix sign, indentation of muscle mass on antrum. Playboy bunny, moose head sign. In the setting of heart failure, an ultrasound of the hepatic vein confluence reveals dilated hepatic veins draining into a dilated IVC. This resembles the Playboy Bunny logo but has also been described as a deer's horns or a moose's head. Falling snow sign. Spermata cells are thin-walled, well-defined anechoic lesions with posterior acoustic enhancement arising from the epididymis. They demonstrate fine, low-level internal echoes with associated falling snow sign. The falling snow sign describes the movement of the low-level echoes within the spermatocele away from the transducer during power or color Doppler ultrasound evaluation, mimicking falling snow. High-intensity ultrasonic waves emitted by Doppler ultrasound mechanically move the particulate material within the lesion, a phenomenon known as acoustic streaming. Acoustic streaming is not only seen in spermatocells but also seen in other cystic lesions that contain low-level internal echoes, including ovarian cystic lesions, breast cysts, hydrocells, and cystic thyroid lesions. Bridging vascular sign. In this image a large soft tissue pelvic mass is identified on ultrasound, demonstrating a heterogeneous echo texture closely adherent to the adjacent uterine fundus, with internal and peripheral vascularity on colored Doppler. Bridging vascular sign. It refers to an appearance of vessels coursing from the uterus into an adjoining pelvic mass, a vascular bridge. This sign helps to differentiate a pedunculated subserosal uterine lyomyoma from other juxtauterine masses of ovarian, adnexal or bowel origin. Double decidual sac sign. Two rings made up of decidua parietalis, uterine cavity lining, and decidua capsularis, gestational sac lining. Rings surround anechoic gestational sac. Interface of two rings is the decidua basalis, where the placenta will form. Appears about five to six weeks of gestation. Cannot rule out ectopic with this U.S. finding. Intradecidual sac sign. The site of implantation is seen as an early gestational sac or an intrauterine fluid collection or an echogenic area in a markedly thickened decidua on one side of the uterine cavity. This can be better identified by identifying the collapsed uterine cavity. Its absence does not exclude an intrauterine pregnancy. Expanded amnion sign. It has been described as a poor prognostic sign in early pregnancy, but not diagnostic of failed early pregnancy. 
any visible embryo that is surrounded by an amnion, visible on transvaginal ultrasound, should also have a heartbeat, regardless of crown rump length. An absent heartbeat in this case is suspicious for early pregnancy loss. Spalding sign. It refers to the overlapping of the fetal skull bones caused by collapse of the fetal brain. It appears usually a week or more after fetal death in utero. Cloverleaf skull. Premature closure of coronal and lambdoid sutures. Wide variation in initial detection of craniostenosis. Usually well developed by 19 to 22 weeks but there are reports of the deformity not evident until the third trimester. Bulging of the temporal bones and confluence of the anterior and posterior fontanelles. Expansion of the anterior cranial fossa superiorly. Expansion of middle cranial fossa laterally forming two bulges. Ring of fire sign. It is recognized by peripheral hypervascularity of the hyperechoic ring. Surrounding an extrauterine gestational sac. Peripheral hypervascularity is a nonspecific finding of the ring of fire sign and may also be seen surrounding a normal maturing follicle or a corpus luteal cyst. Diamond ring sign. Sonograms at 5 to 6 weeks of gestational age shows the embryo as a focal thickening at the periphery of the yolk sac, an appearance referred to as diamond ring sign. The yolk sac represents the ring and the embryo represents the diamond in this earliest sign of embryonic development. Signs related to sex determination on ultrasound are Turtle sign representing male fetus Three-line sign or hamburger sign, representing female fetus. Whirlpool sign. It appears as twisting of the thick and vascular pedicle of the enlarged ovary. It can be detected on ultrasound confirming the diagnosis along with the other suggestive imaging features and clinical presentation. The whirlpool sign of the spermatic cord is a direct sign of testicular torsion, both complete and incomplete. It is considered to be the most specific and sensitive sign for testicular torsion. A spiral twist demonstrated in the course of the spermatic cord on grayscale ultrasound, either in the external inguinal ring or in the scrotal sac. String of pearls sign. Peripheral cysts, the string of pearls sign, can be seen in polycystic ovary disease, but the morphology of the ovary is usually normal. Conversely, the cysts are unilateral and ovarian torsion with accompanying abnormal morphology of the ovary. Signs seen in hydrosalpings. 1. Cogwheel sign. 2. Waist sign. 3. Beads on a string sign. 4. Incomplete septa sign. Longitudinal folds that are present in a normal fallopian tube may become thickened in the presence of a hydrosalpinx. The folds may produce a characteristic cogwheel appearance when imaged in cross-section. These folds are pathognomonic of a hydrosalpinx. Indentations on the opposite sides of the wall is referred to as the waist sign which is a strong predictor of hydrosalpinx. The waist sign in combination with a tubular-shaped cystic mass has been found to be pathognomonic of a hydrosalpinx. Incomplete septa may also give a beads on a string sign. Cogwheel sign. Waist sign. Beads on a string sign. Incomplete septa sign. Acorn breast cyst. Acorn cyst breast ultrasound type of complex cyst where the echogenicity within the cyst is due to fat and protein cells, also known as fatty cyst. String of bead sign. It is the description typically given to the appearance of the renal artery and fibromuscular dysplasia, FMD, but may also be used to describe the appearance of splanchnic arteries and segmental arterial medialysis, SAM. It refers to the appearance arising from the stenosis resulting from the disease alternating with aneurysmal dilatation. Macaroni sign. The macaroni sign is a sign seen in Takayasu arteritis on ultrasound. It represents the smooth, 
homogeneous and moderately echogenic circumferential thickening of the arterial wall that occurs in Takayasu arteritis. The sign is highly specific for Takayasu arteritis, more commonly noted in the common carotid artery. Sonographic halo sign is used in a number of situations. They include hypoechoic halo sign, also known as target or bullseye sign, in liver metastases, used in hepatobiliary imaging, is a concerning feature for malignant lesion if the lesion is a hyperechoic liver lesion. Ultrasound halo in angiolymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia used when interpreting the temporal artery. An ultrasound image of a branch of left superficial temporal artery showing marked asymmetric thickening of the vessel wall, producing a halo around the lumen. A, with color Doppler. B, same image without color. Arrow indicate the outer table of skull. Paraluminal hypoechogenic halo in giant cell arteritis, temporal arteritis, used when interpreting the temporal artery, reflective of arterial wall edema. Candle flame sign in mitral stenosis. Candlestick sign. The ultrasound examination revealed bilateral curvilinear and branching increased echogenicities within the thalamic area. Figure A. The candlestick sign. Color Doppler imaging. Confirmed blood flow within these echogenicities consisted with the lenticulostriate arteries. Figure B. Supplying the region of basal ganglia and internal capsule. This peculiar branching curvilinear hyperechogenicity pattern in the thalamic region is characteristic of lenticulostriate vasculopathy, LSV. Thyroid inferno. It refers to the color Doppler appearance of the thyroid gland in active Graves' disease and consists of multiple small areas of color flow seen diffusely throughout the gland representing increased vascularity and arteriovenous shunting. This is the end of our lecture today. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.